Doctor, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, up next, we have Joel. Joel, if you go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Joel. Hello, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, uh, I've followed you for many years, being a teacher and advocate for holistic health for 32 years. But I have a personal issue. I'm almost 75 years old. And I, um, I tested low testosterone. And presently, uh, my nipples hurt. They're very tender and they hurt. And I'm told that that's an indication of low testosterone. Now, I don't have any teeth I have, except for these false teeth. And I, I, I don't masticate. So much of my diet is raw extracted fruit and vegetable juices, as well as smoothies with fiber. So uh, uh, my symphony is clearly uh, out of balance, my endocrine symphony that is. And uh, where would you suggest I look to uh, help myself? Okay, great question. Would, would I be right in, in assuming that your weight is in the normal range? I'm 145, 510. I've been okay. sitting in a wheelchair for five years and I'm maintaining that weight uh, uh, for all this time. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on all the things that you've done well. You've been following a pretty healthy diet. Uh, you've been maintaining good overall health. Um, but you're wondering if your testosterone might be in the lower range because your nipples are, are, are hurting. Um, your weight is good. Sounds like that BMI is probably around 21, something like that. So you're, yes. you, you're, doing, you're doing, frankly, you're probably doing better than your, your doctor. Um, the, the reason I ask about your weight um, is that one of the most common reasons why testosterone runs low is that when people gain weight as a result of eating cheese and the usual things that Americans eat, their fat cells start to take their testosterone and convert it to estrogen. Fat cells do that, it's a funny thing. They're an active factory. So the testosterone goes in, it's converted to estrogen, the estrogen goes out. So they got low T and they got high estrogen and then they start to get nipple symptoms. Uh, they get gynecomastia and so forth. Um, that probably isn't you. Um, so that being the case, I think that it would be a, a useful idea if you have not done so already, talk with your doctor about, is there any other etiology to this or is this just something that happens? Um, some men do get uh, sore nipples. Sometimes it's, it's unilateral, sometimes it's both. Um, it's in and of itself, it's not worrisome, but you're, you're wanting to know if there's something else going on. The one caution that I would have is that testosterone is something that can change over time and very often does drop a little bit, particularly as men um, get into their 60s and 70s and 80s. It's not, it's not an unusual thing for it to drop, but doctors have been pushed to sell testosterone supplements to patients who may not really need them. Um, and so I would be, I, I think it's a useful thing for you to talk to your doctor, look at, your, at uh, the diagnostic process carefully, but I would really ask for a second opinion before taking any testosterone uh, to try to increase it because the concerns are hormone related problems. Like for example, prostate cancer, jury's not back. We don't really know if, if supplementing testosterone is going to increase the, the risk of prostate cancer, but the evidence for it is sufficient that a lot of doctors like me are extremely cautious about that and are not going to thyroid supplements, even for people where they're kind of borderline low. So that's what I'd recommend for you is to talk with your doctor and see if there's something else, some other stone that has not been uh, turned yet. Dr. Fantastic, thank you very much. We've, uh, we've got a few more questions. Sure. Uh, up next, and forgive me again, I'm not sure if I'll be pronouncing this, it's it's talk or knock. Uh, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, we'd love to hear your question for Dr. Barnard as well. Uh, okay, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, doctor, for being here with us now. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is, is there any link between the omnivorous diet and pre premature puberty among children? And my second question is, uh, is the, how high are the chances of someone who is on a vegan diet that uh, is whole food centered, like grains, beans, vegetables, low oil, to suffer from uh, protein deficiency? Thank you so much. 
Well, those are great questions that you've asked. Thank you so much. Um, the first thing is, yes, there, there is almost certainly a link between diet and premature puberty. Um, and people have, pe people, uh, scientists, epidemiologists have been observing this for many years now. Back uh, in the 1800s, researchers started tracking the average age of puberty in girls, which they typically would track as, how old are you when you first got your first menstrual, menstrual period? Uh, and they also look at, in boys, they look at secondary sex characteristics in boys. And in both girls and boys, the age of puberty is dropping. And it, it's, it's, it's amazing, in fact, to look back in time. Uh, in the late 1800s, many girls didn't reach menarche, uh, reproductive fertility, until they were around 18. And today, they think, what are you talking about? It's 12 or 11. If you think about this, though, is a woman ready to have a child at 12? Physically, she could get pregnant. But psychologically, can she be a mom? No. Um, but if you think back uh, in time, if a reproductive window opened at around age 18, well, she's reaching adulthood. And, and that's sort of the time when, when a woman might be ready to, to start thinking about having a baby. Um, so yes, um, how do foods do this? Uh, I think they do it in a couple of ways. Um, one is that we are simply eating more food uh, more calorie dense foods like meat, dairy products, and oily things. And that may be causing us to grow up a little bit too fast. Um, we learned a long time ago that foods affect gr growth all across the age spectrum. If a baby is breastfed, which is what mother nature was really pushing for <laughs> a long time, um, babies grow up gradually. They reach uh, menarche a little bit later. And they're going to live longer, healthier lives if they're following a healthy diet. When, when babies are not fed from milk from the breast, but are felt fed uh, formula, cow's milk formula, for example, they grow up faster, they gain weight faster. And their parents might think, oh, isn't that great? Um, but you don't want your baby to grow up abnormally fast and reach menarche early and die early. You want to extend life. Um, so the dropping age of puberty may relate both to the quantity of food, the number of calories that are coming in, but also the fact that we're eating foods. Uh, for example, uh, dairy products I mentioned earlier, they have estrogens in them. And because we're eating a very low fiber, high fat diet, we have a bit of hormone haywire that is going on since childhood. So I advocate for exactly the same kind of diet for, that an adult wants to follow for any kid after the age of breastfeeding, after the age of weaning. Uh, that means vegetables, fruits, whole grains, beans, take your vitamin B12 and have it be a healthy kind of diet. Now, can you be low in protein? If you have any normal variety and beans and vegetables in your diet and you're eating enough to maintain your, your weight, your, your weight, and if a child's growing normally, um, they're not going to become protein deficient. Um, every parent worries about this kind of thing. But the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has weighed in year after year after year after year saying vegan diets provide healthy amounts of protein. Now, nervous parents will sometimes say, well, let me pour a glass of soy milk for my, my child with extra protein in it. And you can, and that's fine. Um, in fact, the soy is going to reduce their risk of breast cancer later on in life. That's good. Um, but that added protein, they probably didn't really need it, but, it, but it's okay to do if you want to. So no, you're not going to, you're not going to risk a protein deficiency. That's, that's, that, that occurs really when a person is on an extremely deficient diet because of civil strife, the food trucks don't arrive anymore. And all you've got is some cassava to eat or something like that. You know, you, you will see that thing, that the kind of thing happening in very uh, restricted geographic areas, but not for a person who's got a normal, healthy, varied diet. 